we will next cover a couple of basic statistical concepts that are related to data. So descriptive statistics are some things, uh, some numbers that we calculate from our data. They are like summaries of our data. To understand these basic concepts is important because quite often our more complicated models try to explain differences in mean or try to explain variation, assume something about the variance and so on. So to understand what these more complicated things do, we have to uh, understand the basics. And this is uh, partly high school mathematics, but it's useful to revise it now before we go into more complicated things. The uh, first important thing to know is uh, the central tendency, the concept of central tendency and this person. So these are data about 3,171 3, working age males from the United States and we have data on their heights. And uh, this shows the distribution of the heights. So we have some people that are very short, we have some people that are very tall and most people fall into these, uh, these bins somewhere in the middle. So each bar here presents uh, a group of people, how, how many people fall into their category of, for example, 170 to 175 centimeters of height. So the bar presents the, the amount of people and this is a histogram. It presents how these heights are distributed. Then we have the, uh, the kernel density plot of the same data. So kernel density plot uh, shows us the distribution in another way. So we just have a line and uh, this is uh, the probability density function. That's the, what it's called formally. And uh, the height here tells what is the relative probability of, of observing a person here versus a person here, for example. The area under the curve is always one. So if this is uh, the scale here is, is in the tens, then uh, the scale here must be in the 0, 0.0 something. So that shows us that there are most people are on the, the middle and then there are a few small short people and a few tall people. Now the concepts of, of central tendency tells us uh, where this distribution is located at. So are the people roughly distributed around 175 centimeters or are they perhaps about 160 centimeters or 180 centimeters. So it depends, it, it tells us what is the, the location, that's another, another commonly used term for, uh, for this, uh, where this distribution is actually at on the axis. We have two measures of central tendency that are the most important. The mean is the most commonly used. So mean is just the, uh, the average. You take a sum of all these people's heights and you divide them by the number of people. Then if you have median, which is the, uh, the height of a typical person. The median is calculated by putting these people in a line so that the shortest person is in front and then uh, the tallest person is in the back and everyone there is uh, ordered based on their height and then you take the person who is right in the middle. So it's the midmost observations value and median is uh, a useful statistic for quantifying what is a typical person like in the population because it's not sensitive to, uh, to some people that would be very tall or very short. For example, if we had a person here that was uh, uh, one million centimeters tall, which of course is impossible, then the mean would be affected, but the median wouldn't. So mean and median tells us what is the, the, the typical person or the typical company or whatever you're studying like. The other important concept is, is this person. So this person tells us how, how wide this distribution is. So is everyone about the same size or is everyone between 174 and 176 centimeters? Or are people between 150 centimeters and 2 meters? So this person tells how widely these persons are separated. The most common or the used measure of this person is standard deviation. I'm not going to present you the definition, but it's important to know that one standard deviation is about uh, plus or minus one standard deviation cover about two thirds of the data. Then uh, plus or minus two standard deviations cover about 95% of the data. 
So these green lines show the two standard deviations and then 95 percent of the people about fit into this area. So standard deviation can be, uh, if standard deviation was larger, let's see, here it's about 7.4 centimeters. If it was uh, 10 centimeters, it would mean that these uh, two standard deviations would be about a uh, bit less than two meters. And this one plus minus two, two standard deviation would be a uh, bit more than 150 centimeters. So it would, be, it would tell us that people's heights vary more. So standard deviation tells how much the observations vary. There is this uh, joke about uh, why standard deviation is important. There are two statisticians and uh, one is uh, 150 centimeters tall, one is 160 centimeters tall and they are crossing a river that uh, has a mean depth of 120 centimeters and they're debating on, on why should they cross or not. They, they decide not to because the mean doesn't tell what is the, the deepest part. So we have to understand also how much the, the, the depth of the river, river varies instead of just knowing what is the average depth of the river. So standard deviation tells us how much variation there is in, in the observations. Then there's the concept of, of standardization that is also important. Standardization can be useful and it can be harmful depending on the context. But it's important to understand why we standardize and when. For example, correlation, which I have mentioned before, is a standardized measure, so it applies standardization. The idea of standardization is that you, uh, you take the observations, they are distributed like that, and the mean is at 175 about, and standard deviation about, it's about uh, seven centimeters. You subtract the mean from every observation, and you divide by the standard deviation and that gives you a new variable that has a mean of zero and standard deviation of, of exactly one. So we are basically throwing away the uh, data about the location and this person and we are just retaining the data on how where this each individual is located related to uh, other individuals and we also retain the overall shape of the distribution. This can sometimes make things easier to interpret. For example, if I say that uh, I'm 176 centimeters tall, it doesn't, it may tell you something about my height if you know what the height of the average height of the population is. If I would say that my height is at the mean, then everyone understands that typical Finnish males are about 50% of the time they're taller than me and 50% of the time they're shorter than me. So I'm average height. So standardization can make things easier to interpret, but it can also make things harder to interpret depending on the context. So standardization destroys information by eliminating information about the, the, uh, the central tendency or the location and the dispersion from the data. Then there's also variance, which is another measure of dispersion. And variance is uh, related to standard deviation. It's used because it's more convenient for some, some computations and it's sometimes variance is easier to interpret. For example, in regression analysis, we uh, assess how much of the variance the model explains of the dependent variable. We don't do that in standard deviation metric, we do it in the variance metric. So the standard deviation has same unit as the original variable. So if standard deviation is seven, then we know that these, these bars are seven centimeters from the mean. And if we multiply this variance variable by two, then standard deviation doubles. So that's, uh, that's convenient. Then uh, variance measures the same thing. It measures this person as well, but on a different metric. And variance is defined as the mean of square differences from the mean. So we take each observation, we subtract the mean and we take a square or raise to the second power and uh, then we take a mean of those squares that gives us the variance. Variance and standard deviations are related so that uh, the standard deviation of the data is the square root of the variance and variance is the square of the standard deviation. We work with either, typically if we just want to uh, interpret how a variable is 
distributed. We look at the standard deviation because it's, it's in a metric that is easier to understand. So standard deviation is seven centimeters. We can immediately say that, uh, that the people are 60% or something of the people are between uh, 170 and 185. So that's how standard deviations are interpreted. Variance is 54.79. So that doesn't really, really tell us where people are located at. But variance is useful for some other purposes and uh, particularly in more complicated models we use variances. Sometimes you report both, so that's uh, possible as well. The variance, uh, the concept of variance is important to understand the concept of covariance. So the idea of, of that the variance was the mean of differences of each observation from the mean observation to the second power. So it's the same as uh, difference from the mean multiplied by difference from the mean. Then we have another statistic called covariance. So here we have data on height and weight, height and, and weight. The covariance tells us how strongly person's height is related to the person's weight. So we can see here that uh, those people who tend to be who are taller tend to also be heavier. So there is a covariance here. The covariance measures how much two variables vary together and it's defined uh, similarly to variance except that uh, you don't multiply one variable with itself instead you multiply one variable with another and you take a mean of that. Then uh, the concept of correlation which many of you probably know is just uh, the covariance between standardized variables and correlation varies between minus one and plus one. So correlation is a measure of standardized measure of linear association. When correlation is one then you know that two things are perfectly related. When it's minus one you know that two things are perfectly uh, negatively related. When it's zero then they are linearly unrelated. So correlation is a measure of, of linear association. That means that uh, it measures how strongly observations are clustered in line. So this is a, a scatter plot of two observations and uh, one is a line. 0 0.8 is the observations are very closely clustered on the line. Then uh, 0 0.4 is something that we observe with the plane eye. Zero means that there is no linear relationship and then uh, negative correlations means that when one observation, one variable increases, then another one decreases. So that's the same except the direction is opposite. The correlation doesn't tell us uh, what is the magnitude of the change. So we can say that uh, this is the correlation of one. There is a, a huge effect of, of the, the x variable on the y variable. This is a correlation of one as well. There is a small effect of x variable on the y variable. So the, uh, the y variable here doesn't increase as strongly with the x variable as here. So correlation doesn't tell us about the magnitude of the effect. It just tells us how strong the association is. And this is zero correlation because y variable doesn't vary. And then we have the negative correlations here. Importantly, Correlation is a measure of linear association. So here we have two variables that are clearly associated. So there is a, a clear pattern, but it's nonlinear. Here is another pattern that's nonlinear. And these are, this is a weak positive correlation. And this is a, a clear association, but it's nonlinear. So correlation only tells us if we can describe the data with a line. There could be some other kind of relationship as well. So saying that two variables are uncorrelated doesn't mean that they are not related statistically. It just means that the, the relationship cannot be expressed as a line. 